What's up, Sunday fams? Welcome back to another episode of Watching Sundays. Uh, we wanted to do something a little bit different today. Um, we lost somebody recently, Friday. Uh, Anthony Bourdain uh, took his own life, and um, I'm deeply saddened by it, especially me. Um, I was a big fan of his show, Parts Unknown, No Reservations, um, yep. A Cook's Tour. Um, he also did a couple of things on YouTube. Um, but uh, most importantly, um, you know, he truly connected us through his travels, um, the stories he told. He opened the door um, through many, many cultures, uh, showed us many people, uh, especially through food and drink. And the best parts about it is that there was a lot of food, a lot to drink. And um, I just want to celebrate him, you know, I just want to yeah. celebrate what he did as a storyteller. You know, he made me cry. I don't know about you, but he no, made... No, <laughs> I, uh, I only saw a few select episodes that you showed me mm -hmm. uh, of, of him. I'm not... I didn't follow him too closely, but but it is a very tragic loss. Yep. Uh, I know he's had a very large impact on a lot of people. Um, and and you're right, his shows largely connected the, the world... In a unity that is, for all intents and purposes, quite frankly, lost uh, yeah, in today's um, society. And the, the way, you know, some people bring people together is important. And Anthony Bourdain brought people together with food. And, and it's, 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 hard to, it's hard to reject another culture when the food tastes so good, right? And so and sometimes the food didn't taste that good. Yeah, but, uh, I just but... saw something about him <laughs> that he just had to take one for the team, just so that yeah. he didn't uh, offend any culture. Because if you reject a culture or reject people's food, it's kind of you know offending them in some way, mm -hmm. not accepting their gift. Uh, he opened things up for us. He was able to tell his story through the journey of food and it helped a lot of uh his viewers too who were of that culture yeah right? absolutely. so we were we were watching him you know in in places that that you're from that we're from exactly. and it just kind of sheds a whole new light specifically on like the greatest things about the cultures mm -hmm. and not necessarily kind of like an expose yeah so to speak like 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 what a mainstream media would would display in, in, in other cultures so and he, he got a good job he gained one. access through all these different places and uh, more answers or more conversational and found out about things way more than a typical journalist would you yeah know? what happens when you sit down with a complete stranger and you're eating food and if it's delicious then that's fucking awesome but like a lot of walls get taken down and uh, you, you know you get to find out a few things that normally you wouldn't get in a normal conversation yeah he 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 approached a lot of his show uh, at least the, the episodes that i saw as just some regular dude who's yeah. just trying to trying to enjoy the, the the many traditions of a culture and also partake in their great food and their great cuisine yeah i mean he was unapologetic he was sincere he was bold and he was um, a, a storyteller. And yeah. he made me cry, he made me laugh. Uh, I feel like we've lost a friend, but um, there's other w other places that you can go take a look at um, all of the things that he's done. Um, but I wanna do is I wanna celebrate his life. Mm -hmm. I wanna rejoice, I wanna capture the top five moments of Anthony Bourdain. Number five is Japan. Robots and tomfoolery in parts unknown. Uh, I love everything from Japan. I know you and I have been there a couple times. Uh, this entire episode was insane. There was a lot of shenanigans, some tomfoolery, um, weird ass karaoke from strangers to wild parties with like strippers or yes. cos like all parts it was like strippers. Like, it was kind of like an anime type of uh -huh. type of super super show. It was that insane. Just had everything in it. Yeah. You know, you had. Mad Max, you had Gundam, you mm -hmm. had all kinds of different things in the show. And he said it himself in, in, the, in the episode, he was <laughs> largely confused. Exactly. He had no idea what was going on. I was confused, but <laughs> like it was just like this eclectic like visual uh, eye candy to visual feast tour on. De force, tour de force, Tour de force, yeah, exactly. And it was just like, you get, you get to see boobies, you get to see ass, and then there's a bunch of robots <laughs> just flying around. Samurai, yeah, ninja, so, and just... I mean, that episode was really awesome. Like, yeah. if, if we're talking about the top five moments, these are the things that I remember the most from watching 
I don't know how many shows he's done right now, but like, ugh, there's so many. So there's, many. A, there's a lot. Number four, Rome, black and white. This was No Reservations. Um, I, myself in particular, I'm a big fan of old cinema, especially the black and white uh, film noir ones. Um, I just thought this, this was a great episode, not only because it was just so imperfect the way they put it together, the whole episode was in black and white, but like, um, it was done in such a, such a weird and like, it felt, it just felt like it, it felt was, like film noir. It did feel like film noir, but it felt like it was unplanned. It felt like they just put a few things together, edited a few things together, and it ended up being perfect, regardless of it yeah. being not so perfect. But you know, it was it was done really poetically. Like it was a very different episode. There wasn't really a lot of food in there, but there was this one food that he ate there, and I always want to try to cook it it's it's this like it's this pasta noodles and there's nothing there's not much in it except for olive oil and a lot of cheese uh, it's <laughs> delicious it sounds like a great great food for your kids <laughs> for three vietnam uh barack obama was in this episode for parts unknown and if you didn't know what it was like to have a beer with barack obama this was as close as you were gonna get i mean like how else can you uh, sit down at a table and order a five dollar meal with one of the most powerful men in the United States? And like, he was he was he the president or former president at the time? He was the president at okay, the time, yeah. and he was just like doing a tour in Asia, and he stopped by in this in this local Vietnamese noodle shop mm -hmm. and um, cheap beer, cheap food, but delicious food. But uh, my question to you is like, what would be the one question you would ask? Uh, uh, like a political leader like that. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Let's get controversial here. Oh man. Uh, why would you spend $14 trillion on, on, on the military and say, how can we pay for public college for people? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you guys can answer that in the comments section below. He just got super political. Yeah, he's a, he's a great guest to have. I, I, I remember Barack Obama's episode on uh, on uh, comedians getting, uh, getting coffee in uh -huh. cars yeah, 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 yeah. with uh, Seinfeld and he... You know, he's just a super cool dude. You yeah. Know? He's just very chill and he doesn't come off as like the president, even though like obviously the, the He's somebody that you can sit down with and like crack a few jokes and yeah. and you know like have a beer or something like that. Yeah, definitely. Or two, Borneo. Now this was insane. You see him holding the spear and he just thrusts it into this pig, but he yeah. did it in a, such an elegant way. Um, he was really poetic about yes. it. Yes, he's often poetic about his yeah. delivery, you know? Uh when I was watching that scene, you know, he, he, he does a good job of letting us know that he's done it before and he's and he's felt a certain way about it. Yeah. But this time it was kind of just getting the job done. Yeah, and it, it was just a little surreal for me. Like, I don't think I could ever do that. I, <laughs> I've seen We've seen it many times, you know, like we've seen the slaughter happen many times. Yeah. But you do performing the kill yourself is a little bit different yeah it's 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 like it's like game of thrones man when you when you uh when you sentence someone to death you got to swing the sword yourself otherwise you don't know the weight of your uh, that's a judgment. very good analogy or a comparison um i would never be able to do that I never either. <laughs> and of course number one since i'm filipino and you're filipino yes. um my number one memory of it's probably one of the best episodes he's ever done because not only did We're it biased in that in that sense yes <laughs> yeah i mean not only did it, it it personally it reminded me of how far away I am from the Philippines, yes. the country we were born from, but it also brought me closer. Like I got closer to my native country yeah. watching that episode. And take a take a look at this clip. It's very heartwarming. Um, you know, he he sits down with this uh, matriarch who has sacrificed so much of her life. The same story that we have. You know, mm -hmm. our mom went to the United States while well, we stayed in the stayed in the Philippines so that she can send back some money. So those are. Was one of the major exports of the Philippines is sending family to different countries so they could provide a better life for their family. Yeah, that was one of the highlights of the episode, the way he kind of uh, emphasized the concept of Balik Bayan, which is yep. basically sending back the the fortunes of, of your work, right. having having left your family behind yeah. for, for, for better pay. And, you know, that, that made it feel... De definitely it made me feel things. that's great yeah yeah yeah. because like you think about all of the family that you leave behind um and you think about how good you have it right and to see how how they how much they appreciate it and 
and just how large of a of an impact Malik Bayan has on on families in general. Yeah, uh, and just lechon and all <laughs> lechon the is that... <laughs> probably the highlight of anything in any kind yeah, of family yeah. gathering. Thank you so much, Anthony Bourdain, for taking us with your travels, telling us your amazing adventures. And um, guys, let us know in the comment section below what were your favorite moments. Was there anything that we missed? Um, once again, we'll see you next. And guys, if you are suffering from depression or clinical depression or having any kinds of thoughts, it definitely gets better. Uh, there's, there's people to help you. Uh, we're going to put the suicide prevention hotline on the, on the video somewhere. Just, just know, just stay strong and know that it gets better and we love you. Hey, the boys. Hey, the boys. Bless my homeland forever.